How's it going? Today I'm going to be talking about how to set up a two camera setup in your home for filming yourself just like I'm doing right now. So you can cover up any mistakes that you make just by cutting to a second angle. All right, so let's take a look at how I created this setup. The first thing I took into consideration was where do I shoot? Where do I place the cameras and where do I place myself? I needed an area that had a comfortable seating surface and also had a wall that wouldn't be too close behind me in the shot. Usually it looks more professional to have depth behind your subject, to have some space behind your subject. So I found a place in my house that had depth both from the A camera's perspective and from the B camera's perspective. That way, in both shots, there would be something behind me other than a blank wall. All right, let's talk about the cameras. So I have two cameras on me right now. I have the Sony a7 III and the a7R III. When you're doing a two camera shoot, it's really best to use two of the same or very similar cameras. That will help you avoid a lot of headaches and posts with trying to match the color. On my a7 III, my A camera, I'm using the Lawa 15 millimeter Cine F2 lens. I chose this lens for a couple reasons. One, it's a new lens and I wanted to try it out. Two, it has a wide angle with a wide aperture. It's 15 millimeters and it's F2. So this lens actually turned out to be a little bit too wide for what I wanted. So I put the camera in APS-C mode, which means it crops the image in a bit. So now you're looking at a 1.5 crop, which means this is about a 23 millimeter equivalent full frame lens. Okay, over to the a7R III. The lens I have on here is the 35 millimeter f1.8 E-mount lens. This is also an APS-C lens. I used it just because it's the only 50 millimeter equivalent lens that I have currently in my kit. I did want there to be a substantial focal length difference between my A camera and my B camera. I wanted there to be a wide and a closer angle. So to monitor my A camera, I'm using the Feel World LUT 7S 7 inch video monitor. This is a super, super bright monitor. It's got 2200 nits of brightness, which is about three times as bright as an iPhone. And it's on top of my camera on a shoe mount. So anytime I need to check my framing or anything, I can just do a little glance up, check, see how it looks, and then glance back down at the camera. Now I don't wanna be doing that during the shoot, and I definitely don't wanna be looking at the monitor the entire time because it will look like this. It's kind of strange for the audience because obviously I'm not looking into their eyes anymore. I'm not looking into the lens anymore. Now my B camera is using a wireless video monitor. So the wireless video transmitter I'm using is the Giyun Transmount. It's the one that comes with a lot of their gimbals or you can buy it separately as an accessory. I can keep my iPhone just out of frame down here. And then whenever I need to check my framing for the B camera, I just pick it up and I take a look. So my windows have Venetian blinds, which gives me a lot of control over the light. Check out how the light changes just by adjusting these Venetian blinds. I paid attention to the lighting in the background of my shot as well. If I had left these doors closed, see how much darker everything feels, how much less inviting it is? So not only did I keep the doors open, but I adjusted the Venetian blinds in these bedrooms for the best lighting. The blinds that you can see on camera are closed. If the blinds were open, I feel like it would have been too much of a hotspot back here and it would have been too distracting to the audience. So the windows that you're seeing on camera have their blinds closed, but there's a couple windows that you're not seeing and those windows are all the way open to get as much light as possible on these back walls. So I'm gonna close the blinds on those windows right now so you can see the difference. So now I've closed all the blinds of all the windows back here and even though the doors are open, it still feels kind of dark, kind of uninviting. So make sure you pay attention to the background of your shots, not just the foreground. I wanted to mainly use natural light, but this side of my face still did have some shadows. So I put up a couple artificial lights just to fill things in a bit. Off to this side, I used my Aperture Emiran MW, which is a super bright, tiny LED light that's daylight balanced. So it has exactly the same color, 5600K, as daylight would. So I put it up on a light stand just a little bit above my eye level, and I put a soft 
filter on the light. This is one of those rubber filters that's a little bit frosted, so it just softens out the shadows a little bit. And the second light that I used was the Aperture M9, which is just above my A camera right there, and it's giving me a little bit of a catch light in my eyes, so that my eyes just look a little bit brighter in the shot. It's not supposed to add a whole lot of illumination, it's more just creating a little bit of sparkle. Now this lighting's not perfect, I will admit. You see the shadow over there? That's not good. That shadow is only there because this light is not diffused enough. But if I had diffused the light more, then I wouldn't have had as much punch from it. So this was a bit of a compromise. My final consideration was sound. I'm wearing a lavalier mic right now that's plugged into an iPhone, and I'll show that to you right now. So we have a cable running from a lavalier down my shirt into this iPhone, which is running the Tentacle Sync Recorder app. So the reason I use this app is because it allows me to adjust the input volume of what I'm recording. So when I plug a mic in, I can adjust the volume of that mic. Not the volume of the final recording, the volume of the input. So for instance, I can turn down the input volume, and then if I speak really loud, there's still no distortion in my voice. Whereas if I couldn't adjust the input volume and I was speaking really loud, then it would be completely distorted and there would be no way to save this audio in post. I apologize for the shouting, just had to get the point across. Now I could have used a shotgun mic on a stand, that's what a lot of YouTubers do. The main reason I didn't do that is because I don't have a shotgun mic. Also one reason I like to use lavaliers is because it gives me some freedom of movement. So I can move around, whoops, sorry sloth, wherever I want to go, you can be as close to the camera, as far away, or anywhere in the frame, and it will all sound about the same. Okay, so how do I synchronize all this stuff in post? Well, it's actually pretty simple. I use Final Cut Pro, I import all my footage, and then I make sure that each angle has a camera name. See, this is camera name A7R3. This clip is camera named A7 III. And my audio has a camera name Alvin. So as long as each clip has a separate camera name, then it's really simple to synchronize everything. I use Final Cut Pro's multi-clip feature. So I select one, two, three, select all my clips, right click, new multicam clip, just click OK there, and it creates a multicam clip. And check this out. Boom. Everything is synchronized. Then I can just drop in a portion of my multi clip into my timeline. So Command Shift 7 opens up different angles. I make sure I set my audio to Alvin, and then I can choose whichever angle I want for my video. So as it plays back, I can say, OK, time to change to angle 2. I hit 2 and it changes angles. And that angle change is recorded on the timeline. So it's really simple in Final Cut to edit a two camera shoot like this. So this has been my tutorial on how to set up a two camera shoot in your home. Hope you enjoyed it. Please click like, subscribe, and of course that notification bell so that you're the first to know when I post a new video. All right, I'll see you next time. Come on.